this morning. Um, this is going to be a really good show, not only because um, I get to learn some stuff, um, but but my hope is today um, in talking to an artist who is um, in the business realm, he's able to help educate us on the business of art. Um, at the end of this, we'll really understand not only it's it's value in terms of bringing beauty to the world, but that there's an economic connection to what art can, can you know, that people can survive as artists in this world um, through business. So without further ado, let me bring on board Shivis Davis from Paint with Faith. How are you this morning? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for, for agreeing to do this. Um, I, like I told you this morning, I got a lot of questions for you. Um, probably the most because, you know, I, again, I just don't understand the business of art. I value it. I appreciate it. I understand um, its worth, but I just, you know, how do you really make money off of that? So the, the first question after I ask you who you are and what you do, I want to dispel the myth of the starving artist. Um, mm -hmm. So please tell us who you are, what you do, and, and tell us how a person can make money in art. Uh, first and foremost, again, thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Chevis Davis. I'm an artist. Uh, I just stick with the term artist because there's a realm of things that I do as well. And, um, you know, one in particular is the, my newest business, which is called Paint with Faith. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since 2004. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Paint with Faith has been the most lucrative business, the most successful and I believe the most fun for me. Uh, before that, I uh, used to do video and photography for weddings, special mm -hmm. events. Uh, before that, I used to do t-shirt design. I still do t-shirt design as well. And um, to answer your question, there's so many ways to make money with art. Uh, what you need to understand is that everything and everyone is about art. Uh, whether you're buying shoes, whether you're buying clothes, whether you're getting your house made or decorated, whether you need a photographer for your wedding, mm -hmm. whether you're trying to make a movie or animation series or even write a book, you need an artist for all those things. And so I think people need to understand that artists just not painting and drawing. Right. One a little bit more creative. We're all, but someone sometimes you need somebody, a specialized creative person. And right. so this is actually the time for specialized creative people to kind of step up. Absolutely. Uh, more businesses are being created now than ever, especially realizing that you can't depend on a job in these times. Right. Since, <laughs> since that is the case, people are going to need logo designs, correct? Right, exactly. Exactly. You're going to need t-shirt designs for you know marketing their business. So all of these items that people are going to need, the artists... It's now time to find your local artist, time to find someone you know can draw. And if you're the artist, it's time for you to let people know what you're doing. So this is a great opportunity for artists to make money. I'm so excited. Um, and if anyone need questions about making money with art, I'm definitely here to, to be able to help anyone. Well, we're going to try to make sure you talk about it all here in this, in this show. Um, you, you know, you, you tap on something that really uh, resonates with me for sure. Um, you know, as opposed to someone that's selling a widget, your widget is in here and in here. And so we've seen, not just with this pandemic, but from the beginning of time and centuries ago, how artistic and creative industries have been able to transcend or survive during times like this, um, just because it's who you are. So you will paint because you will paint whether there's a pandemic going on or not. So I'm intrigued really about, um, first of all, how exciting it is, I think, for creative industries to really be able to um, be highlighted right now during this trying time. But have you found this is a great time for you to not only innovate, but also generate revenue you had not expected? Oh, yes, indeed, indeed. Um... The thing about it is sometimes we're so much on a hustle and bustle, on the go, mm -hmm. the nine to five. And for most entrepreneurs, the <laughs> five to 5 a.m., you know, we're usually working extra hours. And so we're so much trying to push on the business that we're missing the new opportunities that we need to be creating. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have been expecting to plan my, my online virtual platform 
for months now, but now I have the time to do it. Uh, I also am an author and illustrator of a book that I have been waiting for the time to do, and now I have the time to do it. So with those things that you've had on the table or in the back burner so, so long, now is the time to finish those things so that when this pandemic ends, uh -oh. you have more content to be able to put out for yourself. Okay. You have more things that, uh, for example, he's a creative person. And it seemed like he created so much stuff so quick. But what happened was is he was building, you know, so much work for an expanded mm -hmm. period of time that when he finally hit that one, everything else was ready to come out. And so I think this is a time for people to kind of be yeah. stockpiling all the things, all the creative things that they've been waiting to do mm -hmm. so that when the time comes, they can let it loose. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about revenue streams in particular for you and maybe other um, artists in the field. What types of revenue streams can you generate? I, I know we talked to our guests yesterday about being able to pivot. Um, I imagine creatives are, are the best at that because we do it all the time. Um, so what kind of, of revenue streams um, have you implement it yourself, have heard of, and, and and talk a little bit about the nimbleness and the ability to be able to shift from one to the other. Well, uh, what I've seen happen is because I've uh, been doing so many type of artistic things uh, that now a lot of people are calling for those separate things that I had, you know, kind of pushed back. For example, uh, I do t-shirt designs. So mm -hmm. if someone needed a t-shirt design, those people are kind of coming in now because they're slowing down as well. It's like, you know, I wanted to get those shirts made. So mm -hmm. they'll call me. I have, like you said, a lot of business owners now asking me to create logos for them just this week. You know, I had, you know, just one day, three people call and say, hey, I need logos. Mm -hmm. And they're creating their new businesses. So that's another revenue stream for me. Uh, the digital or the virtual world of Paint with Faith is now created. So people will are doing virtual classes with me as well. Right. Okay. I have my comic book uh, that I just released um, on, on on Easter, that's now on Amazon and it's you know a number one new seller. So for mm -hmm. new releases, and so there's yeah. another revenue stream that's coming from Amazon. And so since I'm creating some kind of buzz with Amazon, they asked me to be an influencer on oh, their website. Very so, cool. Uh, so once you start taking those steps of faith and taking those necessary steps to kind of build your business the next things will follow. And so okay. I've created a, a revenue stream and, and the goal is to create a revenue stream that you don't have to have to constantly work for as an artist. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to expand yourself to new things. I've gotten into stocks now, created a brand new revenue stream mm -hmm. through that. And so these are the things that I, you know, I wanted to be interested in. And um, now is the time, you know, to really take a chance uh, you know, we're not spending any money on gas, so you can take that <laughs> gas. <money. laughs> in the try stock. To, try to stock, you know, um, to try to buy some new products that you know you've been really needing to try. So this is a time where you can create a different way of revenue stream. And again, every day I wake up, there's a new stream coming in that you know that I didn't expect. But you have to be able to open yourself up and market yourself mm -hmm. as a person to be used for those streams. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm also even doing, uh, you know, transforming people faces into cartoons. Uh, <laughs> that's something that I had never done before. But, you know, since that opportunity came, I want to keep creating. And so also you got to let people know, friends and family, what you do. Don't keep all your art and creativity to yourself. you got mm -hmm. to be able to share it mm -hmm. so that when it comes, they will tell someone, hey, I know, you know, Chevis does that. So now that's, that's, awesome. that's now, you actually tapped on something a little bit. It's not even in my list of questions. Um, <laughs> um, you know, last week we had the chance to talk to a, um, a, a guest who is an attorney around intellectual property. Um, you talked a little bit about, you know, don't just hold your creativity and share with what people with what, with what you do. How do you legalize that? How do you protect that? How do you, I mean, <laughs> well, you have to worry about that. <laughs> you definitely got to work. Uh, care about um, intellectual property is I actually uh, took a course on a college course and I've done a lot of studying on it because I have so many ideas and I want them to be protected. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you, you spend the money and you spend the time to get your rights protected for everything you create, whether it's a logo, whether it's a character, whether it's a book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The number one step, and it still works, is called the poor man's copyright, where you take your idea or your drawings or your, your book or whatever it is 
you uh, you put it in an envelope and seal the envelope and mail it to yourself. Now, what that does is it makes it official because it's went through a government process, a federal co process, and once you it comes back to you, don't open it. Put it somewhere secure, and that will give you a poor man's copyright that you can say, at this date and time, I created this product. No one can steal this idea. So that's called a poor man's copyright, and that's what I initially do because sometimes it takes longer for the official process. Um, the but the official time, process would you, would, for you would be copyrighted. Well, there's three things. There's copyright. There's trademark property. Um, know which one which can work. So books um, and stories and things of that nature. Trademark is for your logos. You know, okay. Your okay. And okay. so you have to be able to, to know which one is for which. So for which product. Okay, okay. And the intellectual property is ideas that you've come up with. Uh, their intellectual property are not tangible. So it's not something that you can see or touch, but it's an idea that you can write down. So you need to know which avenue you need to go to to be able to do that. Um, and then really quickly, I think you it, it kind of phased out a little bit. Can you say those three again? Because I want to make sure the audience really gets this. Um, there's okay. copyright. There's trademark. And what was the third one? I'm sorry. It's actually four. Four. So okay. Go ahead. You have copyright, uh -huh. which is, which is um, works, which is writing works, which is stories, mm -hmm. which is books, and you know the full composition of that thing. Mm -hmm. The next thing you have is a trademark. Mm -hmm. A trademark is for your brand, like Coca Cola, McDonald's. That item or that logo is trademarks means that nobody can use that, nor can they uh, abuse it in a way that makes that company look bad. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing is actually called a patent, which is an invention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if you have an idea for a new widget or a new product that no one ever seen or that may be uh, an alternative version of something that already exists, uh, you can get a, you know, artist to draw that for you. Mm -hmm. And then you, again, a patent is going to have you have that idea. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is intellectual property, mm -hmm. which is a non-tangible item that you can't touch, but just an idea. And it protects the idea uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that no one can steal that idea. You say, hey, I came up with this back in 2014 mm -hmm. and I have, you know, my patent attorney to be able to have that. So those are the four things that you need to be able to to signify which type of thing. And sometimes they overlap. Okay. Uh, but what I said first is you need to have that poor man's copyright, mail it to yourself. Uh, so that way it's official and then go through the actual process. Right. Which is going, right. Going through. Right. Uh, the Library of Congress. Because we, we really want to make sure you go through the official way as well. Sure. Um, as you know, I'm a writer and um, that, you know, I learned something the other day with intellectual property that, you know, with that copyright, you can actually, that actually stands up in court, court of law. So with the four methods that you've talked about, those are really the best methods of ensuring yeah. your works are always um, protected, uh, which I think is interesting. You mentioned patent. I never would have thought an artist would be in the patent game, but you're right. If you're drawing up designs. Yeah. That makes it make that makes perfect sense. Uh, yes. Now let's talk a little bit about pricing. Um, you and I have had this conversation um, about you know, you know, in the creative world, typically you know it's a challenge really um, impressing upon uh, mm -hmm. clients, the community, the importance of not only the value of what you bring to the table, but that that value has a dollar amount that. Right is connected to not just the pretty, but some actual business things you have to do. Um, right. As you mentioned, you know, when you trademark and patent things, that costs money. So yeah. how, what what do you put, what, what do you consider when you, it, are your, is your pricing on a by project basis? And then what are some of the things you consider as an artist when you're starting to set your pricing? Okay, so it's two ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say one, uh, and I would say this. A lot of artists are scared to charge mm -hmm. you know, a fair price. One, because for them, it's not necessarily work. It may be a passion or, <clears throat> excuse me, or something fun to do. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's a conflict there of, oh, I don't really want to charge them too much because there may be family or fr friends <clears throat> or... Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just don't really know what to charge them. So sometimes a lot of artists undercut themselves on the work mm -hmm. that they're doing. 
I can imagine. So, and then there's other who's business minded and they overcharge, you know, where the client is like, you know, I'll never use that person again. So you got to find a happy medium in between, mm -hmm. uh, but ne never devalue what you have to do. So two ways to look at it is come up with a set price for all of your stuff that you're doing and, and, um, <clears throat> and really just have it st stamp, stamped out what you want people to pay. And if mm -hmm. they want to pay it, they'll pay it. If not, they can go to the next way. Another way, if you're having trouble coming up with a price, this is what I tell most artists and students, is think, um, I think that's a, a fair way for them to say, you know what, I got this car note that's $300. This person asked me to do this project. It's going to take me about three days to do $100 a day. It's not that bad. Now I can come up with this price. And so for people who are not sure what to do, they have to come up with a bill or a price set that they know is going to be able to benefit because what happens is in hindsight they char undercharge some person and then mm -hmm. they're like oh man that was way more work than i expected to do and i still can't even cover you know this bill and right. I mean, even, even myself when i when i first started and even now sometimes it happens to me you undercharge and you're like man that was really more work or sometimes you have a, a client that's a headache you know and you gotta charge for <laughs> headaches Exactly. Exactly. You're like, oh, can I can I go back and rechange that price? <laughs> and so it's it's hard to go back to a person and say, hey, I know I said 300, but now it's really 500, and that yeah. person already allocated, you know, 300 for you. I'm like, you know, I can't do that. And so now there's kind of like this weird vibe between the two of you. So you got to be able to set your prices. Mm -hmm. I would always say set it high, and then you know, be willing to take down. Right. You know, so set it high, you know, it's a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, you know, I only have 800, but in your mind, you really were saying 600. So now you got 200 more than you You can make $200 more. <laughs> but, you know, also in thinking of pricing, um, you know, I, I remember, uh, this is a story I guess I like to tell. I remember being in a community meeting where there was sort of this debate about doing some art in the community. It, it was a mural. A community installation um, and there was this debate about the money that was being asked and it, you know it was a situation where artists would have to get on a scaffolding you know there it took more than one person there was a huge amount of, of supplies and paints right. that needed to be purchased and you know someone in the audience stood up and said um, I don't know why we're why they're asking for money for this anyway it's art it's beautiful it should be free and, wow. and I remember just getting angry because I was thinking you want somebody to crawl up on a scaffold <laughs> they, can they at least get a little insurance maybe <laughs> for the supplies? so it's, it's that education that I think is very very important sometimes in societies you know some societies are a little more familiar with that if you look at the New Yorks and the Californias and the, and the Paris Frances and, and those areas of the world but it's right. those conversations do you find those conversations when you're looking at clients and talking to clients are you having to have those you know, let me educate right. you on what this this really is, and do you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think the main conversation that we need to have as a community and as a people is what is the value of art. Mm -hmm. uh, being a teacher for twelve years and teaching elementary, middle, and high school, I definitely infuse the value of art between all my students because mm -hmm. what happens is their parents don't find the value in art. Right. Okay. Because you know, just to say, you know, the black community in most cases does don't value art as a community. Mm -hmm. um, you find in other communities that they may value the art. They'll pay you know, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars a year. Whereas in our community, there is expected to be done for free mm -hmm. uh, as a community service. Uh, and so the 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 lesson needs to be had that art has a great value because it's going to bring life. To the community mm -hmm. and so we have to be able to educate the value of art last year i had opportunity to go um to europe and to finally see the sistine mm -hmm. chapel which was my dream vacation awesome. um, Congratulations. See the works of michael Lange the works of the you know, you'll understand the value of art and not mm -hmm. just the value of art but the value of the artist you couldn't go too close to the paintings you couldn't mm -hmm. uh touch the paintings, of course, all the works of art that you were able to see, 
uh, those artists were revered as great individuals. And not only that, during that time period, the artists were basically the doctors and lawyers of today. Right, uh, because right. Because they were a necessity and they knew that if we wanted something beautiful, it had to be done by artists. And we've, we've kind of lost that mm-hmm. in the society because we have these apps, we have this quick um, mm-hmm. creativity mm-hmm. things, we got Photoshop, we got all of these things that help everybody be creative. And so we kind of lose the value of what a true artist can do and create. And that's the lesson that needs to be had, you know, amongst the community that art has a value that if you see a mural goes up, that artist spent, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40 hours of time mm-hmm. doing that. As you put it on a scaffold, that, you know, right? that can't be safe. Um, right. You know, doing a lot of, um, uh, you know, I, I, I just remember years ago I worked at Macy's and when the gentleman who does the Wyland Wall uh, came to do that wall, um, I was amazed at what it took him to do that. And so I, he was worth every cent because it was just wonderful to watch him. But he's literally dangling from yeah. the contraption that the window cleaners were on to put this on here to, yeah. to, to create that piece. So it, it definitely I had a healthy respect for that. Um, you know, you talked about Michelangelo. Um, I, I was just thinking about this this morning. Um, when this pandemic first hit, many of us in the creative industry, I'm married to a gentleman who's in the creative industry as well. Um, we were kind of freaking out initially because it was like, oh God, we ain't gonna have any work. But it's been interesting to talk to creatives because we, in our natural state, are creating. We're, 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 we're still doing what we do every day. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to monetize it along the way. Um, so, you know, I've asked a lot of businesses, do you have an emergency plan? I- I'm intrigued to hear what an emergency plan for an artist could be, um, considering technically you're still working. Are you making the same amount of money? Maybe not. Um, but, you know, you know, over the centuries, this is an industry that will always sustain in some way. So what could your emergency plan be? And do you have one? <laughs> Okay, I lost you a little bit. I don't I can't oh, hear you sorry. anymore. I'm sorry. Do you hear me now? No, I don't hear anything right now. Let me see. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Wait. Okay, I'm not ready. Refresh. <laughs> Are you refreshing? I see your lips moving, but I don't see Maybe. any sound, no sound right. coming out. <laughs> okay. So, do you want to come back in and or go out? So oh. come out and go back in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, hi, um, everyone. I'm sorry. If you just wait a moment, I'm sorry we're having some technical difficulties. Um, you could not hear me. And I want to give you some more information that I think is very important and very key. So here he comes. I hope he's sideways now. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Perfect. So once he turns it, uh, turns it back up, there yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Then we will bring him back on. So thank you for being patient, patient with us. Um, here we go. Wait, wait, he's still working on it. Um, yeah, because we want to get to the bottom of it. I definitely want to hear what this emergency plan could be. Um, and if he's applied for any of the loans and the grants, is he is he able to do so? So we got to ask those questions. Okay, here he is. Okay. Here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Glad you hear it. Um, so here is my question right before you left. Um, okay. Emergency plan. Could and does an artist have an emergency plan? You don't have the same um, limitations, I guess, as anyone else. You could paint anywhere. So what, what, what are, what have you had one and have you thought about having one or it, what could that look like? Okay. So a um, couple of things. Um, there was a down market 2008 and, um, you know, that was another time where artists mm-hmm. were, you know, not being able to do what they needed to do. And even at that time I was working as an elementary school art teacher and they closed the art position. So I ended up losing my job as an art teacher back mm-hmm. in that time period. So I said, you know, when the next down market comes, and this is important too, that you have a business mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good to be an artist, but it's, it's better to be a business owner and an artist. And mm-hmm. I think I'm a business owner first and then the artist. So that 
that way I can have my affairs in order that can be to the world. Yeah. Because they're looking for business owners to really be able to take hold of the situations that, that need to be taken care of. So for an emergency situation, just like now, you know, I looked amongst my friends and they don't have their financials in order uh, to be able to get the grants and loans that were offered to them. Mm-hmm. And so uh, mm-hmm. I took I took the opportunity last year to make sure I had all my affairs in order, get my paychecks um, allocated the proper way to make sure I had uh, financial notes and financial mm-hmm. reports of everything that I've been doing so that when the government asks, hey, what have you been doing all this time? I can clearly show them. I have them. Mm-hmm. So it's very important that you have your records to have the business mind of what you need to do. It's, it's a it's a passion. It's a, it's a purpose with art, but it's also a business. Know that mm-hmm. you got to be able to pay your taxes. And uh, you also got to be able to take care and have good records and notes of mm-hmm. what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. So that was that was my key uh, to make sure that I had all my financials and all of my business things on point. Make sure that my uh, SBA stuff is up to date. Make sure my Sunbiz stuff is up to date. All mm-hmm. those things are very important. And I think as an artist, we're just doing our work so much that we forget about the very important mm-hmm. business aspect of Absolutely. what we're doing. And so for me, um, I was ready. I was ready, you know, to s- turn in the paperwork to get the loans. I did get uh, one of the loans. I'm working on a pay- paycheck protection right now. Okay. And okay. also. Uh, How's that going uh, for you? <laughs> well, I-, I received one payment already for the EIDL. Really uh, good. So Great. I- congratulations. <laughs> Not a lot of people have received anything, so congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm one of the. And it's like I said, you, you had to have your stuff already ready in order and ready accessible. Um, so uh, that was one way for mercy. And then you have to realize when the business is up, that's when you prepare for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So my business uh, did very, very well last year. And so the whole time that I was doing well, I wasn't just, you know, splurging and spending money. I was putting, you know, months and months of what I need to take care of away. Mm-hmm. I took it of the time that I had and the money I had at the time to be ready for, you know, if it stops. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think a lot of times it caught up so much in the hype and the money that we're making Mm -hmm. that we don't have anything saved for the downtime. We think it's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. We can learn from the football players and we can learn that from MC Hammer that it's not going to always be at the top. Mm -hmm. You got to be prepared for the bottom and have other ideas and other investments. I'm an artist, but I'm also an investor and other aspects, you know, and mm-hmm. other businesses. So you have to be able to have the business mindset to not just be what you are, but to be more than what you are. So what made you mention last year, you sort of had a pivot of um, changing, you know, sort of changing your mindset and getting your affairs in order. What was the thing that made you do that? Or you just decided it's time for me to step up? Well, um, I don't know if anyone follows me on Facebook, but or Instagram, but what I did is uh, it's called a 52 challenge. The top CEOs read 52 books a year or more. So that means a book a week. So if you're reading a book a week, of course you're going to get the right insight from the right people. Mm-hmm. It's important that we're around the right people. If you're hanging, oh, around, right, broke people, if you're hanging around broke people all the time, then eventually <laughs> you're going to be broke. All right? If you're hanging around rich people all the time, you're going to get richer just by the assimilation and the correlation of, of what you guys are doing. You, Business people make ideas on a golf course because the golf course is expensive uh, to be on in the first place. So <laughs> you want to be able to be around or have a mindset of the people that you want to be able to acclimate. Mm-hmm. All of us want to be rich, but how many of us are going to be rich? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to know what to do and who to listen to. If if you if I'm looking, I talk, yeah, if you look listen and talking to a millionaire, it's easier to to get some information from him than somebody who's saying, hey, you know what you should do? And we get that a lot. Uh, one of the books I read, I said the most expensive advice we get is the free advice. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, everybody's always saying, you know what you should do? When they've never done it. So right. You have to, right. to read, um, you know, we're, we're half, not halfway, but a quarter through the year. And we should have read at least 12 or 14 books at this mm-hmm. particular point. Mm-hmm. So the books that I read, uh, have encouraged me and have motivated me to make sure I have my affairs in order. And mm-hmm. so it's not just me saying what I need to do. It's it's lear- lessons that I'm learning mm-hmm. that other people who are successful are doing. And so that's what I, I said I need to do. If I want to be on the track that they're on, then I need to get on the track that they're on. Absolutely. And I got to say, I started this show really as that, you know, if I want to be, you know, 
I've talked a lot about how as business owners, a lot of times we're working on a silo and we're just trying to figure out from day to day what we're doing. But just to be able to have conversations with other entrepreneurs, whether it's in my industry or not, has been motivating and inspiring. And I, and I hope it's the same for others. And I've gotten feedback that people who aren't entrepreneurs have been inspired by some of the things that they've heard. So, um, so you know, definitely, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, definitely being in a space with like-minded people makes a huge difference. Um, so what do you think the, the future of this industry is? I mean, I feel a little silly asking this question, but as you mentioned, you, you know, you had a chance to go um, firsthand, see some of the works of Michelangelo, which meant was centuries away. So absolutely art is going to transcend all of us. Um, but from a, a business point of view, how, how do you see the evolution occurring and in particular coming out of this pandemic? Um, you know, I really can't say what is going to happen and I, I can't predict uh, what's going to happen. But I can say this. You have to be versatile. Mm -hmm. um, my degree is in computer art and animation. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people have not seen my animation before. Uh, but when I was in college, you know, oh. my professors told me that uh, they can't wait till my animation is seen. And I graduated college back in 2004. And so <laughs> I haven't really produced much animation since. But now is the time uh, right. to do some animation. So uh, because of my knowledge base from um, the college that I went to, Savannah College of Art and Design, okay. uh, because of my you know, connections, I was able to be around a lot of artists in every field. So mm -hmm. from interior to fashion designers, uh, to architects. You know, I'm, I have a, a range of artists that are my friends. Mm -hmm. And growing up, that, that's the only friends I had that were artists. And so with that said, art is the one thing that, that cannot be duplicated, mm -hmm. uh, per se. It cannot be automated. Because if you want a mural done, uh, you might have a machine do it, but it may not, the machine won't have creativity mm -hmm. or new ideas. Mm -hmm. If you want a drawing done, the drawing won't have creativity new ideas someone can make you uh, a design but they may not have the creative aspect to say you know maybe you should change this or that and, and have the means to do it so art is the only thing that's going to outlast almost all of us art and creativity uh, because if you want to see a dancer no one wants to see a digital hologram they want to see a real dance right, absolutely. Absolutely. that's going to happen so right. art is going to again you know stand the test of time yeah and absolutely. it's important that we're versatile so that we can also stand the test of time for the t-shirt makers, to the graphic designers, mm -hmm. interior designers. They, they got to be able to have the versatility to say, you know, this is the new platform, you know, that's going to take our job. Make sure I'm ahead of that platform. Absolutely. So you teach um, elementary school kids um, art, yeah. which is lovely. Um, did you talk to them a little bit? I mean, they're young. Right now, they really are just about splashing pretty colors on a paint on a wall. But where, where you saw some talent, did you start to have some of those conversations about how important it is to um, start to think about the value and the value you're putting into your work? Are you able to have those conversations at that age? Of course, of course. And uh, God has blessed me to see it come in, you know, to full circle because I worked at Charles Drew Elementary School. Mm -hmm. uh, 2005 and six or six and seven um and what happened is i was teaching those kids third fourth and fifth grade and it just so happened you know years later years later i was at booker t washington senior mm -hmm. high as an art teacher and those very same kids were in my class oh there you go and they were able to say oh mr davis you know you know we remember you from art class I can't wait to take your class again and then be able to pursue art when they graduated and some particular students um, that, you know, drew into me at the elementary age that now come back to the high school age and, and they still have that passion. Mm -hmm. They just missed me through in that period in middle school uh, or during that time period, there was no middle school art. But I was able to see the true transition. Very nice. Of elementary to high school and then of how they had that passion for it and how they doing art because my art teacher told me um, that I was special, that I had a great gift. Mm -hmm. She made me leave the school I was and go to a magnet art school. So it's very important that the teachers out there encourage the artists to, I know a lot of them are annoyed when the kids are drawing on their classwork, 
<laughs> but we have to be able to encourage these artists to be artists um, and, and, uh, and parents as well. They have to be able to, you know, it's not time for drawing right now, but sometimes that one thing, it may be the one thing that keeps their mind at peace and at ease and that takes them to that mm -hmm. next level um, because not everyone is a doctor, not everyone is a lawyer. Absolutely. Or athlete, yeah. some some people, but the, you know, most importantly, really understanding and educating. And I hope that people do understand that there's a multitude of opportunities yeah. out there for those people who are in creative industries. I know that was a challenge for me as a young girl. Um, you know, being sort of creative. I'm not an artist, though. I can't paint the painting. Uh, but <laughs> being creative, this idea that sort of your nine to five job, that was something you did as a hobby. Your nine right. to five job had to be, you know, had to have a widget attached to it or some yeah. kind of quote unquote credibility attached to it. Yeah. I've just seen, you know, over the years, such a wealth of opportunity in the creative space. So, um, so, you know, there's definitely a, a job that can be had, I guarantee you, if you are artistic and creative. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you about Paint with Faith. Um, okay. I, you know, I wanted to delve into the business part of it and the inspirational part of it as well. But, um, you know, your company is Paint with Paint with Faith. Um, right. You could share a little bit with us about that. Is the piece behind you? I don't think it is. Something no. to do with paint. Because <laughs> I've actually seen that piece before. It's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, I really have um, seen it in Art Basel. Right, right. Oh, soul Basel, actually. Yeah, Soul Basel. Oh, soul Basel. So tell us a little bit about Paint with Faith. Do you hear me? Did I lose you? Oh, wait, you want okay. to for a little bit. Okay, go, go ahead. I'm here. What was the um, question? I'm sorry. I mean, it, it paint with faith. Tell us about paint with faith. Okay, paint with faith. Okay, so um, paint with faith. We've been in existence for uh, six years now, going on seven. I'm um, so excited to have a business, you know, extend as long and have the uh, the longevity that it's had. And it actually was created from you know a sad point in my life where I was doing video and photography. And uh, I did a wedding one night, and someone broke into my car and stole all my equipment. Wow. Um, about $6,000 worth of equipment, video cameras. The wedding that I had just done was stolen as well. And uh, I had a breakdown point in my life where, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I had been using, you know, video and photography and my, you know, tools all this time. And I had to cry out to God and say, you know, what is the purpose of this? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, how am I going to be able to, uh, be able to create and, and be a business owner and be an entrepreneur without any tools. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he says, you know, all you need is all you have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a question for our mm -hmm. artists. That all you need is all you have. That's the statement that you need to be able to resonate with yourself. And so he said, you know, uh, are you, are you a painter? I said, yes. He says, you know, can you teach? I said, yes. He says, can you motivate? He said, okay, well just do that. That's all you do that. And that's how paint with faith was okay. uh, created. And so I was able to take my gift as an artist and as a teacher and as a motivator and bring those fields together to create Paint with Faith. And so, um, again, we started back in 2014 and we've been going, you know, going home since. Good. Do you go to the person with the artwork generally outside of what we're dealing with now? Um, is it a situation where a group could get together and call you up and you would come with the canvases and, and paint? Or is there a location we could find you at? Well, Paint with Faith is a strictly mobile service. So we okay. have a location uh, from, you know, we've been doing West Palm Beach to Homes there, but we had a couple of calls to Naples and we're going up to Orlando as well. So we're expanding, expanding. We have about oh, four now, four vehicles now, about 15 employees working with us. Oh, and um, cool. we're, we're a strictly mobile company. And now, you know, since we come to any location, we're also ready to come to you virtually as well. So we're doing virtual classes okay. if people want to do that as well. We're a motivational company. So we want people to understand that if you can do this painting that we're teaching, then what else could you achieve in your life? With just the guidance with just some motivation and just some faith in yourself. That's what Paint with Faith is really about. And we want you to know that you can take the intangible and create it, you know, make something tangible. You, right. can, you can take the unknown and manifest it into your life. And so that's the motivation piece that it's a faith exercise because you don't know what you're doing, whether you, <laughs> whether you want to get into real estate, whether you want to start a business, whether you want to learn to be a dancer, an artist or a poet, you're taking the unknown and you're doing something, and now you know that you can't do it. So that's what Paint with Faith is, just an exercise to know 
I'm not an artist. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to follow these simple steps. Mm -hmm. Get encouragement. I'm going to get motivated. I'm going to finish. The goal is to always finish. Not to say I can't do this, but to finish and look at it and say, you know, I did that. It may not be the greatest painting of all time, but I did it. And so that's what Paint with Faith is really about, to get you to take and manifest your fear and kill your fear and create your faith. Did you did you so you don't sketch in advance? Because I got to tell you, that's gonna be that's gonna be a problem for me. Well, well, and that's, <laughs> Even then, I color outside the lines. <laughs> so we always say, and your name is, is Stephanie Creek. So we say we're most like our creator when we create. So it's okay to go outside the lines. <laughs> we're giving simple steps, but it's your goal to make sure you enjoy what you're doing. It's really okay. about the experience. It's really about. Not being in a classroom per se where you got to make a name, but being in a classroom where you can create and mm -hmm. say, you know what? I don't want to do it that way, but can I use purple instead of green? Of course you can. Sure. Yeah. Be creative because sometimes, and we have to understand that uh, in school, you know, we can't go outside the lines in a school. Uh, we can't cooperate during the test. But in the real world, we got to go outside the lines. Right. And we got to be able to co cooperate to pass the test. And so those uh, things that we we learn the school sometimes don't translate into the real world, mm -hmm. especially when you're being creative. Because whereas in school, you're in math class and you're supposed to be, you're not supposed to be drawing, you know, at this time, We're you're not supposed, you to be say, not supposed to be drawing at work, but your job is to draw. So it's, it's, it's gotta be something that you gotta be able to translate and know what to do and when to do it. And I think there's a secret artist in all of us, actually, um, whether we're good at it or bad. At it. I think we all like to believe that there is some kind of creativity in, inside of us. And so I have I've said this before. I've been very excited about watching as industries like music, like art, um, you know, the games, you name it. We've been able to do it all on this online platform. And it's really and, and it's really blown up. We've had concerts that are out of control. Even yeah. uh, I was talking to someone the other day about club experience. We're having a club experience online yeah. from the comfort yeah. of your home. But it's just watching creatives um, who are creative anyway and who are innovative all innovating all the time anyway um, really shine and I think and 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 that people are willing to they understand the value and they're willing to pay for it especially in times like this when yeah. it's challenging you you know you know it's been those industries that's been that's kept the American spirit alive during right. serious, serious times like this. And I think that's when people really do understand the value and the importance of an industry like this. Yeah. Um, I could talk to you about this all day just because I love talking to creators, first of all. And I, and, I, and most importantly, what I hope people get out of this is um, that there's a business behind this. Um, yeah. So if you're looking to be an artist, really be very careful and selective of that. Um, I, I made light of the starving artists, but I do know for sure there have been starving artists just because they yeah. understand the value of the work. Um, right. and, and for those who are seeking to hire artists that you are having some real conversations with them about what you're willing to pay. Um, right. Before we leave, I want to make sure that I ask you, where can we find you? Okay. Well, again, you can find me on Instagram at Chevis the goat. My name means uh, goat in Spanish. So Chevis the goat. <laughs> uh, and then you can also find us on at paint with faith. And then also find us at paintwithfaith.com and you can get all the things that you need there. Again, we're going virtual. We're really setting up a platform where people can just click and get the video they want or click and get a live teacher. So we're setting up that platform. Again, we talked about pivoting. So this is our pivot. We haven't got it all, all the way down yet perfectly, but we're working on it. And uh, we have been doing you know a little bit of classes, but we're really going to go mainstream with the click process and to be able to get the class that you want next that you want okay. with faith. Will, will you let us know when that occurs? Because we'll definitely share it. We, you know, go ahead and tag us. We want to make sure everybody knows when it's up and running. Definitely. I just shot the commercial yesterday, so it'll be up soon. We'll be perfect. Ready. Perfect. We'll look forward to it. Maybe I might call you about doing my own little pain experience. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not ready. I'm not sure if I got the guts for it yet. <laughs> Got to be able to paint with faith. <laughs>
Exactly. Thank you so much for joining me today. I, I, I know I learned a lot um, and I hope all everyone else did too. And, and definitely I'll keep spreading the word about what you do. Definitely. Appreciate you having me. Thanks so much. Have a good day. You too. So everyone, thank you for hanging out with us for a while. Um, I know the show was a little longer than usual, but the conversation was really interesting. So um, we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have Anna Klamala, who is the executive director of um, Miami Music Project. Oh, sorry about that. Um, the Miami Music Project is going to be very interesting to talk to her about. Uh, she is a nonprofit, and so how um, they are able to maneuver the landmines during this pandemic, and, and their thoughts around the pivot plan uh, to the next phase, or, or or once we get out of quarantine. Um, so we hope you'll join us. It's tomorrow at ten o'clock, right here, same place, same space. Again, thank you very much, Shivas, and we will have. Uh, I hope. Everyone has a great day. Talk to you soon.